Welcome to Epic Story Recaps. Our story begins with a young lady in distress. She is fleeing from someone or something unseen. She drives to the beach. On the sand, she calls her dad and tells him that she is sorry for being so unkind to him. By dawn, whatever she feared has destroyed her. She looks like she has been put in a blender. Jay, our young heroine, is taking a dip in her parents' pool. She is enjoying the last days of summer. Her sister asks Jay if she wants to watch a movie with their friends, but Jay tells her she has a date tonight. Neighborhood boys peep on Jay. Jay's sister is named Kelly. Her friends are Paul and Yara. Paul looks longingly at Jay. Jay is on a date with Hugh at the movies. While they are waiting in line, Hugh starts sharing about how envious he is of young children because they have innocent, carefree lives. When they are inside the theater, Hugh spots a young woman in a yellow dress at the entrance to the theater. He points her out to Jay, but she, however, cannot see her. Immediately, Hugh starts getting uncomfortable and insists that they leave the theater right away. They go to a diner and hang out. A shadowy figure seems to lurk in the background. Kelly gets the scoop on how Jay's date went. They see their neighbor, Greg, as he washes his mom's car. On their next date, Jay and Hugh are doing the deed in his car. Afterwards, he suddenly chloroforms her. When Jay awakens, she is tied up in a wheelchair. Hugh explains to her that when they had sex, he passed a curse onto her. This curse is an entity that can only be seen by the cursed person and those that have passed it on. The entity can take the form of any person and will follow her relentlessly at a walking pace. If the thing catches her, it will kill her and will go after the previous person who had the curse, which would now be Hugh. He says he got the curse from some girl he had a one-night stand with. The monster would have continued to stalk Hugh until he passed the curse on to someone else, or died, hence the reason he slept with Jay. Suddenly Hugh spots a naked woman. If you look close she is wearing flip-flops, walking towards them. Jay and Hugh then flee. Hugh drops Jay off at home and drives away. The police question Jay. They ask if she knows where he lives. She says she does. But she was never inside the house. Jay lies in a hospital bed, traumatized by what happened to her. The police find her purse and the wheelchair, but no Hugh. While at school, Jay spots an old woman in a hospital gown walking steadily towards her. Surely she can't be headed for Jay, yet the odd woman gets closer, ever closer. Jay gets up and leaves class. Finally, the old woman catches up to Jay in the hall. Jay says hello, but whatever it is doesn't answer. No one seems to notice the thing in the skin of an old woman as she gets closer, ever closer. Jay flees. Jay goes to her sister's work, a Dairy Queen-like place. She tells Kelly and Paul, who has a crush on Jay, about the strange old lady. Paul offers to stay the night. At first they demure because they know Paul is in love with Jay, but then Jay agrees to let him sleep on the couch because she is freaked out. That night, Jay... Paul, Kelly, and another friend, Yara, all agree to spend the night at Jay and Kelly's house. The girls get ready for bed and Paul watches a movie. Jay can't sleep, so she joins Paul on the couch and they watch a movie. Paul tells Jay he enjoys spending time with her. Jay remembers that they were each other's first kiss back in the day when they were kids. As they are talking, they hear glass breaking. Paul examines a smashed window in the kitchen. He looks around, but does not see anyone. Paul goes upstairs to warn Kelly. Jay goes to the kitchen and sees an almost naked woman with dark eyes walking towards her. The woman is leaking something. Jay screams, runs upstairs and locks herself in the room. Jay and Kelly knock on the door. They want to be let in. They tell her that no one is in the house. Jay reluctantly lets them in but locks the door behind them. Jay is flipping out. Someone or something knocks on the door, but it's just Yara. They open the door. A strange tall man with hollow black eyes enters behind Yara. Jay screams and runs out of the house. Greg is a player working his magic with a neighborhood girl when he sees Jay ride a bike away from her house. She finally stops at the local park and sits on a swing. She scans her environment for any threats, but sees none. There is only the rustling of the swing and the silent trees. Kelly... Paul and Yara eventually catch up to her. Someone approaches. Jay frantically asks if the rest of them can see the figure approaching them. They can. It's Greg the neighbor. Jay says she needs to find Hugh. 
Greg offers to help. The gang begin their journey through the hard scrabble streets of Detroit to the house where Hugh claimed to live. What they find is more of a clubhouse than a home. The place is obviously abandoned, but they find remnants of Hugh's presence, a crude alarm system, cans tied to string. Paul finds a bunch of playpen magazines. He flips through them and finds a high school photograph of Hugh and his high school girlfriend. Hugh's girl is wearing a letterman's jacket from a high school they recognize. They go to the school and find Hugh's picture in a yearbook. Hugh's real name is Jeff. They track Jeff down and knock on his door. Jeff explains the rules to Jay. He tells Jay that she needs to sleep with someone in order to successfully pass the curse on to someone else. The gang heads to Greg's family's lake house. Jay sets up a crude alarm system like she saw at Jeff's abandoned hideout. The next day, Greg teaches Jay how to shoot. Later, they relax on the shore of the lake. Unbeknownst to them, the thing is walking slowly, but steadily towards Jay. But she has her back to it, so she can't see it. The entity looks like Yara. It grabs Jay's hair, but only Jay can see it. The others only see her hair being lifted. The thing has her. Paul takes a lawn chair and swings it at where the thing should be. It lets Jay go and tosses Paul aside. They flee to the boathouse as the thing pursues. Jay gets the gun. Jay fires at the thing. She hits it in the neck and it goes down, but it gets right back up. Jay locks them in the pool house. The thing starts banging on the door, breaking a hole in the door. The thing looks like the neighbor kid, the peeper. It is small enough to crawl through the hole in the door, and it does. Jay rushes out the back door and scrambles into Greg's car. She drives away frightened and scared. She crashes into a cornfield. Jay wakes up in a hospital bed. She is being treated for a broken arm and a concussion. She is terrified at being trapped in a hospital. She sees Greg and Paul sleeping by her bed. She decides to pass the curse on to Greg. He agrees to it. They but doink in her hospital bed. Jay finally gets some rest. Paul is heartbroken after finding out that Jay was with Greg. Jay asks if Greg has seen anything, but he says he hasn't. Jay tries to go back to her life as best she can. She starts swimming in the pool again, but she can't help but be ever vigilant, ever watchful. Greg stops by and asks to see Jay, but Kelly won't let him. She says Jay has locked herself in the room and won't come out. Paul asks if Greg has seen anything, but Greg says he hasn't. Paul insists that Jay wasn't making it up. Greg isn't so sure. At home, Jay looks out her window to see Greg walking down the street to his house. When he gets to his window, he breaks it and crawls through. Jay then figures out that the thing has taken on the appearance of Greg. Jay rushes over to Greg's house and looks inside to see the thing has taken on the appearance of Greg's mom. Jay then tries to warn Greg. The thing jumps on top of Greg and kills him. Now, the curse has reverted back to Jay. She drives off as the creature walks towards her. Finally, when she can drive no more, she finds herself in the woods. She sits on the hood of her car waiting, watching. Finally, she falls asleep. When dawn breaks, Jay is near a lake shore. She spots three young men on a boat. She strips and dives into the water and swims to their boat, hoping that she can sleep with one or more of the guys and can pass on the curse to buy herself more time. Back at home, Jay's pool, a symbol of her carefree youth, is in complete disarray. Paul wants to sleep with Jay, but she rebuffs him, since she does not want him to be killed. Paul asks why Jay didn't pick him. She says she thought Greg would be okay because he wasn't scared. She admits that she slept with Greg in high school, so it wasn't a big deal to do it again. Paul says he wants to help, but Jay questions if his motives are pure. Jay looks out the window at Greg's house. Paul has a plan to kill the monster. The gang load up in his car as they drive away. Jay sees the thing on the roof of her house. She is leaving just in time. They journey through the desecrated streets of Detroit. The group goes to a deserted swimming pool in hopes of luring the entity into the water and then electrocuting it. They set up TVs, toasters, and lamps all around the pool. Jay acts as the bait and gets in the pool. A storm rages outside the old building. They wait. It seems endless and then suddenly it appears. When Jay finally sees it, the monster has taken on the appearance of her father. Kelly asks what it looks like, but Jay doesn't want to tell her sister that it looks like their dad. Paul tells Jay to point at it so they know where it is. She does. The entity starts throwing the electronics at Jay. She wants to get out, but Paul yells, Stay in the pool. To stick to the plan, Paul gets the gun and tells Jay to point at the thing. She points. Paul fires and accidentally hits Yara in the leg. 
Kelly rushes to help Yara. Paul screams for Jay to tell him where the entity is. Kelly throws a sheet over it. They are able to target it now. Paul shoots it in the head. It falls into the pool with Jay. She swims for her life, trying to get out of the pool. Just as she reaches the edge, the entity grabs her ankle and pulls her underwater. Paul takes his best guess and shoots. Eventually, he hits it in. The head, it lets Jay go. She climbs out of the pool. Paul asks Jay if she can see it. Is it still down there? She crawls to the edge of the pool and looks down into the depths. A cloud of blood fills the pool. After heading home, Jay bars the door with a chair. Paul and Jay finally have sex. Paul then drives to a rundown part of Detroit where there are some nasty prostitutes walking the street. The implication seems to be that Paul plans to have sex with a street walker in order to quickly pass the curse to someone else. Yara recovers in the hospital. Jay looks at a sleeping Paul. Sometime later, Jay and Paul are walking down the street hand in hand. A person is behind them. Is it the entity or is it just a person? The credits roll. It follows is about fate and death. When we are introduced to Jay, she is swimming in her pool. She looks up and sees a squirrel walking on an electric wire. She smiles. Then she notices an ant walking on her arm. She lowers her arm and the ant drowns in the pool. Life and death are unpredictable. Sometimes you are the squirrel walking on the electric wire and you don't die today. But eventually we will all be the ant on an arm and that's the day we kick the bucket. There is no way to predict it. Something bigger than ourselves controls our ultimate destiny. I also think this movie is about the three types of men a woman may encounter in their dating lives. One, the guy that only uses them for their body. Hugh only needed Jay for his own selfish purposes. He only needed her body for one night to lift the curse on his life. Two, the guy that means well and talks a good game, but isn't grounded in responsibility and follow through. Essentially someone who looks like an adult, but is not. Greg is a metaphor for this type of guy. He offers help and gives it, but he doesn't have the follow-through to make sure the curse is really lifted. He is a child in man's clothing. Greg is not differentiated from his mother. I think that is why the entity took her form when it killed Greg. 3. The guy that isn't perfect, but has the endurance to stand with his partner through any storm. Someone that will always be there no matter what. A good partner. Paul is this third type of person. His plan to kill the creature is kind of dumb, but it's the best he can come up with. Paul is the kind of guy that always gives his best for his partner. He is there through thick and thin. I think Jay realizes this when they are in Yara's hospital room. She looks at Paul and sees that he is a reliable partner. It Follows is a great movie. All the characters are believable and relatable. It Follows is entertaining and thought-provoking. I highly recommend seeing it. Thanks for watching Epic Story Recaps.